Hey, what's going on? I wanted to go through this, uh, the PowerPoint over the introduction to material properties. Um, so let's get, let's get going. Okay, the first thing that we're going to talk about is this idea of moment of inertia. And we'll use a capital letter I for that. Let me get that out of the way where you can see. Let me back down over here. All right, we'll see how that works. Okay, now notice that it's going to be in inches to the fourth. Uh, so don't think when you're putting that in your calculator that you're going to do to the fourth power. It's just like inches cubed or inches squared, just inches to the fourth. So what we know about the moment of inertia is it's going to be based on that material's cross-sectional area. So what does that what does that mean? That means that it has to do with an object shape. So the stiffness of an object due to its shape. Okay. So the example that I always use is a ruler. In one in this direction, I can flex it pretty easy. Okay. But if I operate it like this, it's pretty hard to bend. Okay. So stiffness related to shape. Okay. So in general, higher moment of inertia produces a greater resistance to deformation. So basically, the bigger the number, the harder it is to bend. Okay. Two things we're going to talk about with, uh, and we're going to use wood as an example, two by four or two by six is the joist position, which would be up and down and the plank position, which is the, the longest axis is horizontal. Um, we've got a couple of different materials, uh, or a couple different things here. We have a, a, uh, a one by four, five essentially so on a it they're both two by sixes and that's one of the things that i want you to understand is that all lumber has a call size and then it has its actual size so a two by four really isn't two by four inches it's an inch and a half by three and a half so a two by six is an inch and a half by five and a half so when you put this in your calculator you have to put in the actual size of the beam not the call size um and so you could always look those up on the internet um but there they are. So, oh, okay. So it says, hey, which one's going to have the greater resistance? I already showed you that. So you should know that A is going to be the stiffer of the two. And then they do some PowerPoint magic there. Inventor using Inventor. So the base and the height. Okay. So difference in moment inertia. Why? is it mathematically different? So when we're calculating that, you'll notice that the height is to the third power. So it's got more importance, right? So when you do this formula, your moment of inertia is base times height to the third. Make sure that you only attach the third to the height and not it's not base times height to the third. That three just goes with the H. And then we just divide by 12 so we can look an example, go ahead and put this in your calculator because you have this example and make sure that you can do it correctly. All right. So here it is. And they do it like that divided by 12. And when you get that, ah, they kind of break it down step by step and 21 inches. A rounding there and that's fine um, inches to the fourth okay so you ought to be able to to get something close to that when you put it in your calculator and if you do it in the beam you'll notice that it's a lot less so we went from 1.5 to 21 so very different numbers 14 times stiffer in the joist position which is why we use them like that when we you know if we do floor joist or a ceiling joist um, and so why are composition, why are, why are composite shapes different and why do we use them in design? Okay. Well, we can do more with less. So if we look at these items, the first two have the same area. Okay. Um, now the second and the third one have the same, you know, width and height. Okay. So let's look at their moment of inertias. And we can see for area wise that the first and the second have the same amount of area, 
but the I-beam has 10 times the moment of inertia. Well, why is that important? Why do we use I-beams? Well, less material, right? So that's a big thing. Anytime you can build something with less and do the same, it's cheaper. Um, so that's always a big deal. Remember, engineering is not just will it work, but doing it the most efficient way. Um, and then so we see just a overall beam. It does have a higher moment of inertia, you know, but a lot more material in that guy for just, you know, a little bit more bang. So the I-beams um, are, the, are the most efficient way to go. Now, so that all moment of inertia is all about an object's shape, nothing to do with what it's made out of, okay? So if I had... Obviously, this is like this ruler is made out of steel. So its moment of inertia is going to be the same if it's made out of steel or, you know, plastic or jello. Doesn't matter. Well, you know, um, whatever that is. Modulus of elasticity has to do with the material. OK, so how bouncy or how springy, bendy, you know, stretchy whatever the word is that you want to kind of kind of talk about with modulus of elasticity. So in general, the, the, the higher the modulus, the produces a greater resistance to deformation. So it, it's going to be a lot stiffer. So if I have a, you know, a low modulus of elasticity, you know, a little bit more springy. So um, you can think about things that you want to be squishy. Um, a bumper might be something that you want to be squishy. The next thing we have um, are a couple of beams. Both of them have the same moment of inertia. They're the same size. They're both a two by six. Okay, one of those is made out of uh, Douglas fir, and the other one you see is made out of ABS plastic. Okay, all of their physical dimensions are the same: height, width, length, um, moment of inertia, but the modulus in these two things is going to be different. So when we look at this, we see that the plastic one bends a lot more. It's not as strong as we would say. And so why is that? Well, that's because of its chemical makeup, you know, the atoms that make it up. So modulus of elasticity has to do with the, with the atoms, you know, the, at the very molecular, what makes up that object. Okay. So, we can look at that. So the next thing that we're going to talk about is span and, and load and those kinds of things. And so we're going to talk about anytime we see the triangle, that means change. So the delta max is, is what's the max something can bend without breaking. OK, so we're going to talk about the applied force and the length of the span between the supports. OK, so if I if I look at a, a beam, here is my my formula for that. And you can see that on the in the numerator, I have force times length to the third, okay? And then divided by a constant, which is 48, times its modulus of elasticity, times its moment of inertia, should give me the max that it would change for that force. So if I wanted to figure out how much bend, you know, if I, if I you know, if a 50 pound block is, is I wanna know how much does it gonna deform? And engineers, when they build bridges, they, you know, usually want to have less than, say, you know, half an inch of deflection in a bridge with a 10 ton truck. So those signs that say, you know, 10 ton trucks are supposed to only bend a little bit that much. Um, so calculating beam deflection. Big thing here is that you make sure that when you go on this L, the length, OK, that the length of that is going to be really you should kind of think about span not length of the board because you know if i had an eight foot board but it was you know i had a block setting here and a block a foot from each end then my span's only six foot so you need to put your span in there not necessarily the length and we're going to do that in class with with a, some cinder blocks and and so that's the mistake people make measuring the length of the board not the length of the span there and then also only the length is is cubed okay and then down here on the bottom when you see that remember this is not an exponent that's just inches to the fourth that's part of the unit so you don't raise that to the fourth power so those are kind of the mistakes that people get put this in your calculator make sure you can get the same number so you know that you're doing it right and remember when in doubt parenthesis it out 
Uh, next, we have the same thing we do, exact same number. Notice that we get a pretty big number on some of these for modules of elasticity, uh, 5.3 inches. So the difference in those, if we built them out of wood or if we built it out of plastic, what would the, what would the deflection be? So the wood's a little bit stronger and that's it. So make sure you can do those numbers. Make sure you know how to find the moment of inertia of boards. When we come into class, that'll be the first thing we do. Have a good weekend.